Hi everyone, it's Gene Calderon here again with Gene Calderon Apologetics Ministries, and we're going over some teachings over this holiday season. It's the end of October, the very last week, and Halloween is upon us. And so a lot of times we get into discussions about whether or not we ought to celebrate Halloween, what is Halloween really about, and some of the portrayals or the way that people practice Halloween without really looking at some of the origins or some of the explanations of why Halloween is here in the first place and what does it really represent, or those who first practice it, what did they understand? understand it to be. So if you've missed some of the previous videos, we've got at least five previous ones. Go back and look through those. We're taking a little step each uh, along the way. And so you'll be able to catch up to where we are today or just watch this one for in itself. Um, so today we're going to talk about pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, and witches. What is that about and how should we respond to these things? Well, when we're talking about something like a jack-o'-lantern or Halloween pumpkins, those originally referred to a night watchman or a man with a lantern over in the British Isles years ago. And it was also used to describe some uh, phenomenon of strange light that might have been flickering over swamps or bogs that had the appearance of people carrying a lantern. Now, scientists, when they discovered this or when they looked into this, they called it something known as ignis fatuus. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Close enough. But basically, it means fool's fire. And it was thought of to be just a spontaneous combustion of gas that usually produced over some decaying matter. And so for centuries, when people who weren't scientists or really didn't have the science to understand what was going on, they believed that it could have been the souls of the dead wandering about just aimlessly and even leading some people astray. And so this is where some of those ideas of jack-o'-lanterns or, or spirits crossing over, especially during the nighttime in the evening where you could see these lights, would spook people. Uh, the first time that we hear about the term jack-o'-lantern is referred to when we're talking about a carved vegetable used as a lantern back in 1837. An author known as Nathaniel Hawthorne, he wrote this in his short story called The Great Carbuncle. Hide it, the great carbuncle, under thy cloak, sayest thou. Why, it will gleam through their holes and make thee look like a jack-o'-lantern. Now, the tradition of carving lanterns probably came from the British Isles, and there was a long tradition for them using things like turnips or beets or other vegetables for that purpose of having a lantern. And when those people immigrated to the North America, they would have found some of the large native pumpkins especially useful for making these kind of lanterns. While people in the British Isles probably use these carved lanterns for something known as souling. Again, if you're not familiar with that, go back, watch a previous video. But souling was when the poor would go house to house and ask for some goods or some food because the nights are getting colder, it's getting darker, and they would need some help to be able to get through those elements. And so they would use these kind of lanterns or carved vegetables for uh, going out souling, asking people for help, or any other outdoor activity. And it doesn't really seem to have any kind of connection with the holiday of Halloween. In fact, that connection seems to have developed later on in North America. And it was first recorded in 1886 by a Canadian newspaper where we read, The old time custom of keeping up Halloween was not forgotten last night by the youngsters of the city. They had their maskings and their merry makings and perambulated the streets after dark in a way which was no doubt amusing to themselves. There was a great sacrifice of pumpkins from which to make transparent heads and face, lighted up by the unfailing two inches of tallow candle. And so when we see these, these traditions of a, a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern, that's pretty much where it came from. It was just something that they would use as a lantern, and sometimes they would have fun with it, with using faces or things like that. Um, and it really didn't represent anything more than just trick-or-treaters who were playing pranks on people or having fun with the idea of having a lantern. And so when people today are carving pumpkins or carving out jack-o'-lanterns, really, there's different ways we can do that. We can do it in a way that portrays light in darkness, which is a Christian perspective, or people can use them to try to scare people, okay? So it's really up to us. What are we doing with it? What's the intent behind that? And the jack-o'-lantern itself is basically a vegetable with a candle inside. That's all it is. What it represents really depends on its creator, who is carving it and what is the purpose behind that. Now, talking about people and purposes, Let's look at the idea of witches, because that has become popular, especially in our day and time, especially with the youth. Many people are often lured 
into witchcraft or thinking that witchcraft is okay. Uh, and they claim that it's because there are such things as good witches who might use something called white magic. That sounds maybe appealing or even safe or safer, but any kind of witchcraft makes us vulnerable to the spirit realm or even demonic spirits. And witches are most likely connected to Halloween for two reasons. First of all, because of their craft. They were associated with darkness and Halloween is that marking of the change of the seasons where it's going to be darker most of the day at that time of year. And so witchcraft becomes a little bit more popular or uh, you might get the idea that witches can now operate in longer periods of time because it's darker. That's, again, the original intent of witches was that, was that they worked in the dark. Today, modern day, it's like, oh, they can work in the light or white magic, things like that. So it's the same idea, but they're now saying, well, we can do this at any time. But secondly, witches supposedly had the ability to communicate with the dead. And Halloween, if you remember, or go back, watch some of the previous videos, Halloween was a day that was used to commemorate or to remember those who had passed on. Remember All Hallows' Eve. It was the day of remembering all the saints who had passed uh, before. But either way, when we talk about witchcraft, God is especially forbidding of that. No one should be practicing witchcraft. We find this in the Torah or in the books of Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, we read this. Let no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, and who is a medium and spiritist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Now, when we look at a definition of what a witch is, Webster's Dictionary tells us that a witch is someone who is credited with using malignant supernatural powers. But even witchcraft that claims to be good or to use white magic usually seeks as its source of power the spiritual realm. And when we're looking for power from the spiritual realm, we open ourselves up to many different kinds of influences, powers that many times we don't understand and we cannot control. So it makes us extremely vulnerable to something like a demonic spirit who has intentions that are never good. They are meant to lead us astray. And so when we're talking about witchcraft and white riches or good witches, again, it is seeking power from the spiritual realm, which is not where we dwell. That is not something that we can control. And so we have to be very careful with that. And that is why we reject that. It's very different than the high idea of the Holy Spirit or the idea of God and angels. It's very different than that. But when we're dabbling in it and we don't know and we don't and we're not familiar with the scriptures that teach us these things, then we do open ourselves to being tricked, fooled, deceived, and even pulled away to places we don't want to be. So I hope that helps continue to follow us. We're going to keep doing this and looking at a couple more ideas about what entails Halloween, what's involved in Halloween. But again, if you haven't seen many of the other videos, go back and look and kind of put this all together and decide whether or not you yourself would like to participate or not participate in Halloween. Either way, I think is fine. But I think the most important thing is being able to explain the reasons why we decide yay or nay when it comes to Halloween. So again, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you. And click on some of the other sources that we have there on our different playlists. And we'd love to be able to see that and hear your comments about that. Right, God bless. We hope to see you soon. Take care.